last time on Sprig Plays Hustle Cat. It's like an Aki shirt, isn't it? He's my favorite too. A Aki what? And here we go. I guess I should go find where Landry ran off to. He's training me today after all. I think he went upstairs? I head over to the foot of the staircase, but a cat's taken station right in my path. It's sleeping belly up, stretched out to nearly the whole width of the step. Buddy, that's really cute and all, but that's like a dangerous place to sleep. It doesn't dignify me with a response. Instead, the fat orange cat shimmies in place to settle itself even more. Gently, I nudge it to see if I can get the cat to move. Someone's gonna trip on you if you don't move. It opens one eye into a thin slit, then makes a murmuring noise and flicks its tail. The little tiger isn't going anywhere, is it? Are all the cats here this spoiled? Guess I'll have to pick it up and move it myself. This might end poorly. I lean over to scoop it up, but as I do, a tiny orange and white bob-tailed cat whizzes past my feet. It stops on the step below the sleeping cat, then raises one paw and bats the other cat squarely on the forehead. The sleeping cat wakes up and hops to its feet. It looks angry. Am I going to have to break up a cat fight? Hey, you two. The bobtail flattens its ears and stares intently at the orange cat. They both perk up when they hear a voice from above. Oh, is Hash Brown sleeping on the stairs again? The orange cat, Hash Browns I guess, trots away. Landry works his way down the stairs, eyes on the bobtail kitten. Was well, it really necessary to smack him? You should just be nice. The bobtail turns its head away in a wide arc, almost as if it's giving an okay, whatever, in response. It lazily struts over to the windowsill and takes up sentry. So, that cat's name is Hash Browns, then? <laughs> yeah. Graves names all the cats here. He comes up with some interesting ones, for sure. What are some of their names? Hmm. Well, at the moment, there's Ramona, Shunsuke, Kotick, and Owl, Bramblepelt, Now, Hissa, Valentine, and Marina, and In and Junta, Jamband, and so on. Oh, holy shit. Which one was that bobtail? Oh. His face falls. Why does he look so nervous? That's, um... Why don't you ask Reese later? It's Reese! Huh? Is that his cat? Did he name it or something? Does it have, like, a bad name? Uh, n no he's... Grave should have told you about... Um... Well, let's go to work, okay? It's time to open! Landry isn't having any of this. He walks past me to the front door without a glance. He unlocks it and flips the sign from close to open. And ta-da! Your first day at a cat's paw has begun. And... nobody's here. This is a little anticlimactic. <laughs> yeah. The mornings are usually pretty slow. It might pick up later, though. Or not. <laughs> it didn't. At all. All day. Sure, a few people came in, and Landry had me wait their tables while he supervised. It went pretty well, and I made a couple bucks in tips, but that was it. Finley came down a couple times to check in, and I saw Mason and Hayes every time I went into the kitchen, but I didn't see Reese at all. Reese's bobtailed cat, on the other hand, was all over the place. I think I see why you take a shine to this one. They're both complete hams. <laughs> Not that I mind that it was slow, it just meant I got to play with the cats more. There are like... 10 of them here? Maybe? I can't get a solid count on them. Hmm... I wonder why... They seem to vanish sometimes. Looks like there are a lot of areas around here for them to hide. Like, thank you for your help today, Avery. Landry, Finley, and I just finished wiping down the tables. Mason was gone before the cafe closed. I don't know where Hayes went. So, how do you like it? Is it always this quiet? I mean, not that I'm complaining. Not always. Tomorrow should be like busier for sure. I've got like plans. Oh, we should get here early then, huh? <laughs> don't say that like you aren't always early. Oh, so I have to come in earlier? Don't worry too much about it, Avery. Just, like, show up at your regular time. Okay. Thanks. 
I can't imagine what busy means here. What, like, six people in here at the same time? I've got, like, a little more work I want to do on the blog. So, y'all go ahead, okay? I'd like pose up if Grace doesn't get here to do it. Oh, thank you. Avery, you can head out too. Thanks. Are you leaving now? I could walk with you. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be out in a bit. Um, you go on ahead. Oh, alright. See y'all tomorrow. Night. Good night. The door closes behind me with a jingle. I have a job. My co-workers are pretty cute, too. I get to play with cats. And, if this works out, I should be able to afford a place of my own soon. Wait until my parents hear about this. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I can't help giving a little celebratory fist bump. Alright! I think I just heard someone snort a laugh behind me. I thought I said that pretty quietly. I turn around to see who it is, but there's nobody there but a cat. Two cats, actually. Cats from the cafe. Reese's cat and the Siamese cat, to be precise. Crap. How'd they get outside? Did I let them out when I left? This is really bad. I'm pretty sure one of the first rules of working at a cat cafe is do not lose the cats. They're not looking at me anymore. Now's my chance. I start creeping towards both cats. If I move too suddenly, I might spook them. I only make it a few steps before I see the bobtail's ears swivel back to face me. Without turning the rest of his head, it takes a springing leap and heads down one fork in the road. The Siamese cat continues down the same path, as casual as anything. I can't get them both, but I need to get at least one of them. I better decide who to go after. Well, I mean, we're more likely to get the Siamese cat because it's, like, walking all slow and stuff. But, I think we all know these cats are people. So, by choosing a cat, we're, like, putting a point towards, like, one person's root or whatever, which makes this decision hard. Because I really have no idea what to do at this point. Okay, follow Reese's cat. I know he's not supposed to be out here. What a little jerk cat. I take off after that bratty bobtail. Reese's cat suddenly stops, turns around, and plants his haunches on the pavement. He looks up at me with a surprisingly bored expression. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't think we were gonna have this happen so soon. Oh come off it, Avery. You can stop tailing me now. Unless you were that bent on following me home. Uh the cat is talking. Why? <laughs> Why you look so surprised? You knew it was me, right? What? 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 Come on. My cat self and human self look so similar. They're both equally gorgeous. How'd you not put two and two together? Of course I didn't put two and two together! Who the hell is going to think- Oh, of course, he is also a cat. That's the most absurd thing I've ever heard. I can't believe I'm even having this conversation right now. I'm really glad I chose Reese's cat now. I don't know why I expected you to know anything about witches. I mean, look at you. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> well, it means I don't think you know much at all. Fine. Graves obviously did a trash job of explaining this, so all the work is up to me. Again. Everyone at a cat's bar is under a curse. Once we leave the premises, we turn into cats. The curse is likely tied to the cafe itself, though I don't think anybody else knows how. This is probably the most absurd thing I've ever heard, but it's also sort of hard to deny because a cat is telling it to me. So, everybody. Graves, too. Who knows? I've never seen him as a cat, but I haven't seen him do a lot of things. Does that mean... Am I going to be cursed, too? I wouldn't be surprised. Well, I would. How do I end up... Not cursed? Well, if I knew that, I'd be a lot taller and a lot less furry right now, dumbass. How do you even get a cat curse? Didn't you hear me? Witches. Believe it or not, this area is full of them. Um, I'd go with the or not but I can't really come up with any more plausible reasons. This is just absurd. I've just had a long day and my brain's leaking out of my ears, that's all. I might just be imagining this, that's all. Are you done then? I have, like, things to do. What, like chase birds? Cute. Real cute. Look, if it makes you feel better, we can talk about this more at work tomorrow. 
with everyone else. Yeah, sure, whatever. Introduce me to all the talking cats. Just don't be late again. Hey, I wasn't late today. I get the feeling that if he had the shoulders for it, Reese would be shrugging right now. Instead, he rolls his head to the side. Reese stands back up. He takes a grand leap up a trash can, then up again to the fence. Whatever you say. Good night, Avery. With that, he's gone. Huh? Good night. The sun's barely gone down, but I am capital letter done with today. This is too much. Is this, is this mochi now? Don't forget the good food this time. The canned stuff. Uh, did someone just say something? There's nobody here but Mochi. Uh, oh for fuck's sake. I find him standing next to the food bowl, looking up at me with those expectant eyes. I gently nudge him with my foot. Did you just say that? Meh. Nope. Nope, I'm done. I dump the rest of the canned food into the bowl and scurry out of the kitchen. Then I dump myself in bed. I don't even want to think about it right now. I'm just going to sleep in a real bed for once. Maybe sleeping on that couch so much is messing with my head. I don't usually close the door, but I think it's a good idea tonight. I don't want Mochi whispering to me in my sleep. I wake up early enough I surprise myself. This is gross, who does this? At least I slept fairly well, all considered. My cheek hurts, kind of like I'm getting one of those real powerful zits. Just when I have a job where I see people all day. What perfect timing. I kick my legs free of the big blankets and roll off the side of the bed with my usual grace. God, this feels gross. I don't have any acne stuff with me here, but maybe Aunt Wendy had something I can put on it. I trundle over to the vanity to assess the damage. Uh... That's not a zit. That's a whisker. There is a whisker growing out of my face. You're turning into a kitty. It won't come out. I thought at first maybe it was Mochi's and it just got stuck there, but nope. Growing out of my face. I tried to pluck it. That was probably one of the worst ideas I've ever had. Now I know just how sensitive cat whiskers are. Is this really how the curse starts? I've been pacing around for too long. I gotta go to work, but how am I supposed to leave the house like this? What if someone sees me? I guess I could try to cover it with something. I dig around a bit and find some dust masks under the sink. Maybe that'll do the trick. I can just pretend I have a cold or something. Or not, because trying to put it on feels really awkward against my face. I'm at a loss here. I'd call one of the staffers, but I didn't get their numbers yet. I guess it'd be hard to use a cell phone as a cat anyway. It's a little weird, because if they all know he's going to turn it into a cat or whatever, you'd think they'd be, like, prepping him or something. I don't know. I'll just have to go to the cafe and hope someone's there to ask. I didn't run into anybody on my way to the cafe yesterday, but knowing my luck, there'll be a whole crowd or something. I keep my head down and walk quickly. Jesus, my face itches. I hope another one isn't coming in. The thought is enough to make me pick up my pace. Running to work is going to be a theme for me, it seems. Maybe it'll keep me in shape. I just hope I can keep my human shape, too. Why are there so many people milling around the front of the cafe today? This is exactly what I was dreading. It's like they showed up specifically to look at the magical mutating cat person. As I approach the cafe, the whisker falls off, like a dead leaf or something. Oh, so that's why Reese was telling him not to be late. That way, so I guess when you're at the cafe, all those changes... Well, no, because he was a cat there. So, his Reese was in his cat form. I don't know, we'll see. Look at it just flutter to the floor. I lean down to pick it up. If I hadn't seen it happen, I would have thought it fell off one of the cats. This is stupid. This is so stupid. My eyes start to sting. Can't tell if I should be mad or crying or both. <sighs> Avery. This is just really, really stupid, and I don't want to deal with it. I kick the door open with my foot but it's actually pretty heavy, so it just sort of nudges open. Where the hell is Graves? Looks like most of them are already here. They're already setting the table for breakfast, like this is just a regular, normal day where nobody grows cat whiskers. Oh, Avery. I don't think he's in yet. What's the matter? This is the matter. This whole dumb situation. 
He probably can't see the whisker I'm waving around, but I don't care. He knows what I'm talking about. Oh, is that yours? What kind of cat are you? I'm not any kind of cat. I'm a people. I can't believe this. Oh, come on, Avery. You should have known this was gonna happen. How the hell was I supposed to know? Sounds like somebody here didn't read his contract. Yep. The safe areas and other tips are mentioned in the welcome pamphlet. What contract? You signed some paperwork when you started, right? Yeah. Well? How can you all be so chill about this? We work for an evil dungeon lord who's turning us all into cats. I don't think they're like, called dungeon lords? Avery, none of us are happy about it either, but we're doing what we can. There's gotta be more you could be doing. Where is Graves? Well, he may be upstairs, but I don't know. I remember hearing Graves going up some creaky steps yesterday. Maybe that's his office or something. Whatever it is, that room's gonna be missing a door after I kick it off its hinges. I storm toward the back of the cafe. The steps must be back here somewhere. Hayes and Mason are in the kitchen. Hayes is gawking and even Mason's got an eye on me. A Avery, where are you going? I've had enough of this. I gotta give him a piece of my mind. What? This curse shit. The others trail me to the kitchen. What am I, the cat herder? <laughs> Avery, chill out. We're not like all mad about it. Most of us signed up for it on purpose. It's done some good things for some of us. Well, I'm mad about it. I'm mad as hell. Turning into a cat won't do shit for me. I know you're mad, but it's really not Graves' fault. He does a lot to help us. We owe him. Well, I don't owe him a damn thing. Seriously, Avery. Surely our boss isn't gonna change anything. There's like nothing we can do about it right now. So like, let's just sit down and talk about it. So here's the thing. Um, this is obviously like the, the nice answer where it's like, yeah, I guess you're right. Let's, let's be civil and talk about it and stop yelling and... However, one, it is kind of an unreasonable situation to begin with. And two, I have a feeling if I pick this, we get to kind of confront Graves head on and I think that would be interesting. So there's one thing I can do. Quit. Yeah? Well, there's one thing I can do. I can walk out of here right now. Yeah? And what good is that gonna do? You gonna fix this all by yourself? Where are you even gonna go? Reese, don't antagonize him. You're just gonna make this worse. I'm not putting up with this anymore. I'm out of here. I turn on my heels and storm towards the exit, pushing past everybody bottlenecked at the hallway behind me. I make it back into the cafe and almost back out the front door. Landry and Finley both move quickly, though, and before I knew it, they're standing ahead of me. Please, Avery, calm down. Like, don't get ahead of yourself. Listen to us. Huh. <sighs> Curious. Because this makes me think that... Well, this happened earlier, too, with, um... The thing in the kitchen. With Mason and Hayes. I was like, you sure you want to stay in the kitchen? You want to go back and talk to Reese instead? Hmm. Double down. I'm done listening to this shit. I storm past them, letting the door slam behind me. I can hear them shouting as I go, so I break out into a run, full tilt away from the cafe. Nobody follows me. I can't hear anybody after a few minutes of running. I keep running, breakneck, until my lungs give out. I don't know if a cat could run that fast for that long, but I don't want to find out. My face itches. I reach up to scratch at it. I feel the texture of fur against my palm. Oh shit. He's an actual cat boy now. Paw, not palm. My gray cat paw. My body tingles all over. I hate it. I can't stand this. I run as much as I can, until I can't run any further. My back feels... long. I can't stand upright anymore. I have no choice but to put my hands on the ground. My paws? They aren't hands anymore. They never will be again. Where am I? This isn't anywhere near my apartment. I could get home, but what then? Where will I go now? Who can I tell about this? What do I do? Will Mochi even recognize me? I'm alone except for him. 
All I know is, no matter what happens, I'm sure as hell not going back to that cafe. Take this job and meow, 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 meow. <laughs> so there's like early bad ends, like in Starfighter. Like you can get game overs. Okay. That's good to know. All right. Next time we'll we'll reload and uh, proceed with not doubling down <laughs> on that decision. Because <laughs> otherwise we turn into a, a cat that just roams the streets. Poor Avery. I'm sorry, buddy. What? 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 You're like a bitch, right? What? 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 You're like a bitch, right? What? 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 Why is it always the one-liners? Um... Uh, uh. Hello, I'm Mason. What? What? What?